another exciting edition of our interview segment. Of course, today we'll be speaking with the Japanese ambassador, Your Excellency Yutaka Kikuta. We are going to be talking about Nigeria-Japan bilateral trade. How well is the Nigerians in Japan doing? Are they doing well? Sit back, relax, and enjoy the interview segment. I remain your regular host, Princess Abigail Amalaha, for Supremacy TV. Your Excellency, um, what do you think about Nigerian um what do you think about the Nigerian society? Oh, my experience? Yeah, I came here last May. So I spent here more than one year. And uh, I had a great admiration of this uh, fascinating country. This country has a you know, yeah, large economy in the African continent. And there are rich national resources and their cultures. But not only them, I respect the most is the democracy, you know, people's effort to maintain democracy. This is very important for this country. And it is admiring to see that the, uh, since 1999, uh, you maintain somehow it's called democracy in this country. You have the uh, six year, 60 years anniversary next year. So it means one third of this country's history is based on democracy. You overcome civil war, you overcome seven times a military coup or a dictatorship. So we have a great uh, respect of this country. What do you describe your country's relationship with Nigeria? How do you describe your country's relationship with Nigeria? Uh, talking about the uh, Independence Day coming October 1st, let me first uh, send a message of uh, congratulations to all the Nigerian people and I uh, wish you a happy Independence Day. Uh, this is really significant in terms of the Japanese uh, relations with Nigeria, like you ask, because uh, uh, 60 years ago, 1960, I understand the, uh, uh, many African countries got independence. Among 15 countries, we will have the uh, 60th anniversary of diplomatic establishment relations next year. And among those 15 countries, Nigeria is the very first country, Japan, opened its embassy. And from the very beginning, we have concentrated on Nigeria only. I would say other Japanese embassies in African countries, ambassador, has a lot of support, lots of uh, responsibility to other countries as well. But here in Nigeria, we established the very first embassy here, and only Nigeria. Uh, no, my predecessors or myself is concentrating on. It shows how much importance Japan put to Nigeria. How has it just concluded the seventh Tokyo International Conference on African Development impacted on your country's relationship with African countries? Okay, uh, twofold, may I, if I may say. Uh, one is the, uh, as you said, uh, uh, our contribution to African continent as a whole. And the second uh, aspect is our bilateral relationship with Nigeria. First point, uh, ticket seven, uh, we have uh, more than 10,000 uh, participants, uh, including 42 African leaders and from the business circles. So we have uh, lots of uh, side events too. So it's a huge international conference in Yokohama. And at the opening session, Prime Minister Abe uh, made a keynote speech. And there he announced the Japanese uh, new approaches um, on human resources development, including so-called Abe Initiative 3.0. Uh, he uh, announced that uh, Japan will support the uh, 3,000 African students on the you know, yeah, business occasions for coming uh, six years. As well as he announced the so-called new approach for peace and stability in Africa, NAPSA. So not only the business or economic uh, you know, field, but uh, Japan is ready to contribute for the sake of the peace and stability in Africa. And the uh, 
orientation of this time of the Tikka 7 was uh, business. For the first time in the history of the tickets, uh, we have the uh, official participants of, from the uh, private sector as well. So in, in the past, TICAT is something like uh, government officials together with the African leaders talk about uh, our development assistance. But uh, this time, for the first time, we put the, uh, a lot of emphasis on the business to business relationship. It means an African economy come to that point. And the Japanese companies have a keen interest in investing more in African countries. So at the plenary session, uh, we have the uh, participants from the business sector as well as the official participants for the first time. There, Nigerian President Buhari made an intervention. And, you know, Mr. Tony Elmer, the founder of the Elmer Foundation, made an intervention. So Nigeria made a great impression on the uh, you know, uh, business uh, talk session at the Ticket 7. As a result, uh, we, we means uh, all the African leaders together with the uh, international organizations and Japan and other donors uh, issued the so-called Yokohama Declaration and uh, action plan, plan of action. So we think we have the uh, concrete and the significant achievement uh, thanks to the, all the participants, including the leaders from Africa. And uh, this plan of action, I should say, TICAT is a process, not only one short talk shop, but we have the follow-up mechanism. So this uh, plan of action is uh, evolving documents. So from now, if any developments or initiatives show up, that initiative should be written into the plan of action so that uh, we can continue to move forward this process until the next TICAT 8 meeting. This is you know, uh, how the TICAT process is working. So this is the, uh, but the first point, it's the entire uh, result. When it comes to bilateral uh, context, I think this times TICAT 7 is really, really historic in our bilateral relations. We have the honor to have the presence of the uh, President Buhari. Maybe for the first time as a president, and the uh, first time in uh, 11 years after the uh, President uh, yeah, uh, Yarado visited Japan 2008 for the G7 Hokkaido uh, Toyako Summit meeting. So, you know, first time in a decade we have the uh, Nigerian president in Japan. This is really historic. And uh, President Buhari had their bilateral summit meeting with their Prime Minister Abe. And their Prime Minister, our Prime Minister, announced the uh, Japanese uh, you know, uh, contribution, mm. further contribution to Afri uh, Nigeria's development. Uh, one is the uh, uh, Japan-Nigeria Business Facilitation Council. We propose to establish it. And uh, we have the endorsement by President Buhari. So we are working now on how to, or when, or to whom, with whom uh, we gonna establish that council to in invite more attention from the Japanese companies to Nigeria and to make the, uh, Nigeria's uh, uh, environment for the business even more you know, attractive and easy to, to making a business. This is the first achievement in the economic field. Second one is the uh, uh, health sector. Uh, we, now ticket seven, the theme, one of the ticket seven theme is you know, resilient society. In that context, you know, the education, human resources development, or health sector, in you know, universal health coverage, those kind of things are very important. So in that context, uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, announced uh, our new uh, support in the field of the uh, uh, infectious diseases uh, countermeasures. 
uh, with a grant assistance around 2 billion Japanese yen. It is unfortunate that the Nigerian press uh, carried the number or figure like uh, 12 million. But there is a difference between million and billion, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is the health sector. And the third sector was you know, safety, stability, security issues. And Prime Minister announced a uh, new uh, assistance for the uh, Center for Strategic Research and Studies of the National War College. It's a kind of a peculiar center. But you know, I'd like to emphasize that not only the economic field, but Japan is supporting President Buhari's second term. Economy and security and the fight against corruption. So, uh, I think uh, it was a very good timing for President. Just you know, one week after he established a new cabinet, uh, President Buhari has the uh, you know, support and, uh, and endorsement from the Japanese Prime Minister. And it was impressive for me that the, uh, President Buhari's side mentioned the uh, you know, opportune time, or uh, time is uh, uh, very good timing for both Japan and Nigeria. You know? Interest on Nigeria in the Japanese side is increasing, and we had a <laughs> presence of the uh, President and foreign ministers, and lots of you know, private sectors are represented in Yokohama. And the President Buhari mentioned a strategic partner about Japan. He said the, uh, you know, Japan as a strategic partner for Nigeria's socio-economic development. We are very much encouraged to hear that, and uh, we will continue to do whatever we can do to assist and support uh, this country's initiatives. How do you envision the future of uh, Nigeria and Japan bilateral mm -hmm. relationship? And what could be the embassy of Japan's contribution? Our contribution, yes. Uh, since I came here, I made uh, many uh, steps, I would say. Yeah. Uh, the uh, main you know, aim of mine is that uh, we want to send the uh, positive image of Nigeria to back to Japan. Because uh, before I came here, I heard a lot of story about Nigeria in Japan. <laughs> Sorry to say, but the uh, many uh, information I heard in Japan were rather negative ones. No? like a Boko Haram, or crime, or corruption, or no? all those kind of things. And yeah, uh, sorry to say, that, but uh, it is the uh, piece of the f fact that the Japanese peoples uh, have the uh, uh, distorted image about Nigeria in Japan because of the lack of uh, information or uh, mass media you know, only carry the negative side of the story as a news. No? But uh, after I came here, I found the beauty of the Nigeria. Mm. Mm. So our embassy would like to strike a balance, mm. send uh, no, a positive image to invite more no, Japanese people, Japanese uh, business, Japanese companies, Japanese capital to Nigeria. And uh, as an embassy, so you know, the uh, uh, those information, as well as the, uh, I do a lot of work to assist the Japanese companies' operation here, or send a good message to the headquarters in Tokyo and Osaka in Japan. Because I have the firm belief that the assisting Japanese companies' operation in Nigeria is for the sake of Nigeria. for the job creation, for the technology transfer. You know? So not only for the Japanese companies to make money in this uh, country, but you know, Japanese companies' activity, I am so sure will have the uh, positive impact for the uh, diversification of the industry, development of the uh, economic uh, you know, plan 
of this country. So I had a firm belief that the, uh, my activity, my embassy's activities, is for the good sake of the, not only the Japanese business, but also Nigeria's development. We do a lot of our job. Yes, and I see your country has been involved in a lot of humanitarian services in hmm? the Northeast. Your oh. country has been involved in a lot of humanitarian services yes. in the Northeast. This is mm -hmm. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Can you give us more insight? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, our assistance policy toward Nigeria has mainly three emphases. One is the uh, support for the infrastructure. Second is support for the health sector. And third one is uh, northeastern areas you know, assistance. So this side shows our you know, assistance, including development assistance and the humanitarian assistance. And uh, we do a lot of things, but the, uh, you know, you, you, uh, number four, mentioned the uh, Northeastern uh, assistance, over the 64 million US dollars for humanitarian contribution in the Northeast. So this is the uh, uh, Japanese guy in the uh, UNDP, together with us, and helping the uh, IDP people in Northeast. Since I came here, I visited uh, 12 states, including uh, Borno and my degree. Because of the security issues, Japanese private companies or JICA people cannot go there. But we can go there. Uh, together we see uh, international organizations like UNDP, WFP, ICRC. So we extend our assistance through those international organizations. And when I went to the, uh, uh, my degree, I uh, used the uh, United Nations airplane to <laughs> my degree airport. Okay? So we are working together, and we have the uh, monetary uh, contribution to those international organizations through our budget systems. And uh, when I go there, for example, uh, I took some uh, Japanese companies, uh, Solar Lantern, together with me to give to those IDP villagers. So it's a kind of uh, uh, private and public collaborative uh, operation so that the, uh, I can sell the name of the Japanese private technology to the uh, IDP people in the Northeast. So uh, we, we have many ways to assist Northeast part of the Nigeria. Okay? And uh, this picture is for example, ambulance. Okay? You can find a, a picture of ambulance in every state. Do you know? Huh? Every 36 state and uh, FCT has at least one or two Japanese ambulance now. So those are not so un no, well-known facts, but this is the fact. So those ambulances, you know, saved lots of uh, people's lives. Not only FTT area or Lagos area, but all the states have Japanese ambulances. We are very happy to note that. So this is a yen loan and grant assistant and the uh, grassroots assistance and the you know, uh, assistance through international organization, especially to northeastern area. So. Yeah, which event do you have in the future that can impact on Nigeria and Nigeria's positive? Hmm. Uh, from now on, future events. Uh, in terms of economic relations, as I mentioned, we are working to establish uh, Nigeria-Japan Bilateral Business Facilitation uh, Council. Uh, we talk with the uh, NIPC, you know, Ms. Sadiq. The CEO of the NAPC is a very good friend of mine. So, uh, as the president indicated, no? the, uh, now the president uh, second term, I feel he's really determined to work for the future of the Nigeria, for the you know, economic recovery, industries, uh, you know, diversification, and we are very happy. So, yeah, through that, the yeah, you know, uh, bilateral. Uh, 
business classification council. Nigeria can learn a lot from their Japanese experience. Then um, if really Nigeria improve the ease of doing business, then it gives a very, very good message to the Japanese companies you know, operating here as well as yeah, hesitating in Tokyo. So it will be a very big impact in economic terms. And in the security and safety field, as I mentioned, we make a contribution already, and we are exploring what kind of other you know, uh, contribution we can make for the safe, safety of this country. This is very important, not only for you, but also for us, <laughs> people living in Nigeria. No? And the uh, other things I'd like to explore is the uh, area of culture. Because uh, Nigeria is uh, rich, you know, has a rich culture. You know? Like a little of the uh, movies, music, everything, sports. You know? So in those areas, I'd like to you know, the, uh, increase the awareness of the Japanese people in Nigeria. Do you have any particular Nigerian artist that you notice music so much? Yeah, artist? Mm. So about the uh, movies, no? the uh, Nollywood is uh, very famous. Uh, by, the, by, by the way, I, I was uh, in India before I came here. So in, in India, it, there is a Bollywood. No? In Nigeria, there is a Nollywood. No? So Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood are three terms in myself. And we are going to have the uh, Japanese animation movie presentation in coming November in Lagos, Lagos International Film Festival. And next month in December, uh, we're going to present it in Abuja. I'm telling my Nigerian friend that uh, I have two things I like about Nigerian people. One is your uh, smile. <laughs> you have a very nice smile. And uh, you are very good at uh, reacting my joke. No? <laughs> when I put some jokes, Nigerian people make a good laugh. I like it. No? You know, Japanese people are very shy. So when I make a lecture and ask a question, they are very, very quiet. Um, but they are, you know, Nigerian people has a very nice smile. I like it. And the second thing I like about Nigeria is the national anthem. Both melodies and lyrics. Yeah? Lyrics, you have, you know, all the important uh, value for Nigeria. Like, you know, freedom, unity, peace, heart, right? So, national anthem has everything Nigeria. Uh, have to respect. And every, every time I hear the song, mm. I really hope mm. <laughs> freedom, and unity, and peace yeah, <laughs> will yeah, come out in the reality. Actually, I, uh, as a diplomat, I you know, uh, posted many, many countries, and I know many countries' national anthem. But uh, yeah. this, this uh, mm -hmm. homepage is the uh, you know, Nigerian restaurant in Shinjuku. Tokyo. Hey. Yeah. Uh, many African restaurant bar, Esogie. Do you know that? No, I don't know. No. <laughs> Emma. Egushi. Ah, Egushi. I know Egushi. Egushi. Yeah, Egushi. Amara. Amara. Mm. Mm. Many. Kautel soup. Mm, okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> Oh, yes. Can you give us an idea what it is all about? Yeah. Uh, this is really historic. No? To tell the truth, I once been the uh, Chamberlain to His Majesty the Emperor, Emperor Heisei. That, that's a photo. No? You can see the Emperor and the Empress, and on the far right uh, standing guy was me. And after 30 years, we have the new Emperor and the uh, enthronement ceremony will take place in next month, October. So this is very historic. In Japan, we have the uh, name of era according to the emperor. So when the emperor uh, changed, 
our error's name also changed. Mm. So I served for the Emperor Heisei, but the, uh, now new, under the em new Emperor, we have a new error called Reiwa. Reiwa in Japanese means a beautiful harmony. Wow. As, you <laughs> as you can imagine, we Japanese people attach a great importance to the uh, peace, harmony, live together, and work together, prosper together. Mm -hmm. So the name of the uh, new era, Reiwa, represent kind of symbolic aspiration of the Japanese people to live in peace. Like your national anthem, yeah? <laughs> peace and unity. Okay? So it's a very historic event. And yeah, like 30 years ago, uh, emperor extend his invitation to all the monarchs and kings, uh, press and head of the states all over the world. Yeah, so we are expecting the participation of uh, one highest level from Nigeria as well. Uh, many you know, the monarchy countries, uh, there is the uh, no, king as well as uh, prince or princess. Uh, so <laughs> they can choose some royal families. But the, uh, as a republic, you have the uh, president, vice president. Mm. I want to emphasize that the, when you look at the bilateral trade relationship between Nigeria and Japan, Nigeria has always uh, you know, benefit black ink against Japan. But uh, when it comes to Japan, we import uh, more from Nigeria than we sell. So we are very grateful. This figure shows the uh, Jap uh, LNG, you know, uh, na natural gas import, oh no, sorry, export from Nigeria in 2015. Okay? Nigeria sell your natural gas to Mexico, Spain, India, South Korea, but as you see, Japan is the far number one importer of your natural gas. Yes. Uh, there is a specific reason why in this uh, 2015, because uh, a few years before that, we have the massive earthquake and tsunami and the nuclear power plant explosion. Is that 2011. By the way, I'm from Fukushima. So we suffered a lot, and uh, the government shut down all the nuclear power plants. But as you can imagine, Japan is a big economic power in the world. So we need energy to run electricity, well, generators. So at the time, Nigeria helped us in terms of, you know, national yes. resources. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we are very grateful for Nigeria. But the, uh, in these uh, years, you know, the uh, Nigeria's export to Japan is uh, coming, coming down as we diversified our, you know, yeah, energy resources, including, you know, renewable energy. So, on the Nigerian side, you need to diversify more and exactly. make lots of you know, uh, sellable okay. products. So this figure shows the uh, investment. Yeah. The number of the Japanese companies operate in Nigeria. Yeah. As your economy is uh, you know, picking up again, mm -hmm. the number of the Japanese companies are picking up again. Nigerian ladies like wigs, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, made by Jap Japanese companies. Yeah, Kaneka. You know, more than half. You are wearing wig, are made by Japanese company Kaneka, yeah. And uh, this company Kansai Paints, Kansai Plastic, is now making the uh, you know, paint for foam wall. Uh, but the uh, it have the Japanese technology mosquito repellent. Yes. yes. So if you paint your house wall with a Kansai paint. Your house become the mosquito free. Wow. It's good for the health. It's nice. yeah. That's good. Yeah. And uh, you know, here yeah, solar lantern. Oh, like a year or like six months or 
Yeah, yeah, there is a certain duration, of course, but they're not bad health effect against the people. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, we have a very, very high quality standard in Japan, so Japanese product you can rely on. <laughs> I, I promise. Yeah? Uh, and as I told you before, the, those are now solar lanterns, solar panel systems helps a lot, even for the poor people. I went to uh, Imo State the other day to present the uh, Japanese uh, solar uh, lights on the street for, I don't know, 100 meters, 200 meters. They don't have the, uh, so much money. But uh, they have the sunshine. <laughs> By the Japanese technology, during the daytime, uh, they charge solar energy. So if they have the uh, eight hours of the sunlight in the daytime, this solar light can produce a light three, 30 hours straight. Okay? And uh, when the sun goes down, the switch automatically turn on so that they give the light during the night time. And when the morning comes, they automatically switch turn off. So there is no need for the human being to go to the turn on the turn off the switch. Yeah, so those are you know, modest contributions, but they are you know, extending. Both Japanese you know, uh, official develop basis as money, as well as Japanese private companies' technology. Japanese Afro sushi <laughs> in Abuja now. I understand there are four quasi uh, Japanese uh, restaurants in Abuja. Yeah, there are uh, uh, around uh, 10 in Lagos. Uh, we are very happy to uh, you know, uh, introduce. Japanese cuisine, Japanese sake, <laughs> Japanese culture to Nigerian people. This is where we'll be ending today's exclusive interview, of course, with the Japanese ambassador, Your Excellency Yukuta Kikuta. I hope you enjoyed today's segment. Until I come your way next time, I remain your regular host, Princess Abigail Amalaha, reporting for Supremacy TV.